So welcome to this video on algebras in measure theory. So hopefully you've already watched the uh, first video in the playlist on measure theory, which is on semi-algebras and algebras. And in that video, we introduced the definition of a semi-algebra and also the definition of an algebra. In this video, I'm just going to make one further point about algebras that I didn't go over in that video. So firstly, let's just remind ourselves of what the definition of an algebra is. So we have some set x for which we are creating an algebra over that set, and we will denote the algebra by curly A, and remember that it is a subset of the power set of x. And by the way, I should say, if you take for your algebra, or indeed your semi-algebra, the entire power set of x, that will always satisfy all of the definitions for both semi-algebra and algebra. So there's always at least one algebra and indeed semi-algebra for any set that you come up with, which is the power set. So let's just remind ourselves of the properties that a subset of the power set has to obey in order to be called an algebra. So remember, the empty set and the entire set had to be elements of the algebra. Two, it had to be closed under finite intersection. So if E1 and E2 are elements of A, then if you intersect the two of them together, E1 intersect E2, that also has to give another subset of X that is in your algebra. Remember, the moment that you have this, it then implies that all finite intersections are inside your algebra, so that the algebra is closed under finite intersections, because you just apply induction using this, and then you get that uh, it is closed under finite intersections. And then finally, property number three was that if E is an element of the algebra, then E complement, meaning X subtract E, is also an element of the algebra. Remember, this is where an algebra is stronger than a semi-algebra. In a semi-algebra, it just had to be that the complement was buildable out of disjoint, pairwise disjoint elements of the algebra. Where, sorry, of the semi-algebra. Whereas for an algebra, it has to be the case that the complement is actually in the algebra itself. So these are the three properties, and if they hold true for your class of subsets of x, then that class of subsets, or another word that we need to get used to in measure theory is family of subsets. So the name for this set of subsets of x, you can call it a class of subsets of x or a family of subsets of x. In order for this set of subsets, or indeed a set of subsets of x, uh, in order for it to meet the criteria to be called an algebra, to deserve that type, it has to obey these three properties. Now, we discussed that then in the previous video. What do I want to explain to you here? I want to explain that with these two together, two and three, you can infer, or you can not even infer, infer is the wrong word, you can deduce that um, it is closed under finite unions as well. So it, we could add, if you like, a fourth property. This isn't a separate property because actually it's deducible from property two and three. The moment two and three are true, this fourth property is going to be true. And this is that if E1 and E2 are elements of the algebra, then E1 union E2 is also an element of the algebra, so it's closed under union. And of course, just like we did for intersection, the moment this is true, you can then say that for a finite uh, union, it's also going to be true. So for example, if we just take the case of three for firstly, so if we have E1, E2, and E3 are elements of the algebra, and consider the union of E1, E2, and E3, this is also going to be an element of an, the algebra, and this is because you can sort of associate the union just as you did with the intersection. So you can firstly look at E1 union E2, so that's everything that's in E1 and everything that's in E2. So anything that is in either E1 or E2 is going to be in this final set, and then we know by the fact that this is true, that this thing will then be in the algebra, and then if you union that with E3, 
Well, you're then just doing the union of something in the algebra with, again, something in the algebra, and therefore this is going to be in the algebra. So then all I need to convince you is that, indeed, this is the same thing as this. So what does union here mean? It means build a set that is made up of the things that are in any one of these three things. Everything that you're going to get here is going to satisfy that criterion. The set that you build here is going to contain anything that's in E1 or E2, and then the set that you're going to build here is then going to be anything that's in this set, so anything that's in E1 or E2, with anything that's in E3. So unions associate in the same way that intersections do. And then by induction, this extends to finite unions, just as it did for intersections. So if you have E1, E2, all the way up to En, and you union them together, that's the set that contains anything that's in any of those sets, then um, it will also be in the algebra, um, as long as those things that you've union together were sets from the algebra. And again, it's just because you can split it up into loads of unions of just two things that are in the algebra in the same way, and then imply induction. So formally, you'd do it by induction. You'd assume it was true up until some value and then you prove that it's true for the value beyond there, and then because it's true for two, it's then true for three, etc. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to show that two and three together imply that this is true. So if it's true that it's closed under intersection and it's closed under complements, then it is also true that it's closed under unions. So let's take two elements then. So we take e1 and e2 are in the algebra. We are given that this is an algebra, so properties 2 and 3 hold true, and we want to show that e1 union e2 is also going to be in the algebra. So what we know is that because e1 is in the algebra, e1 complement, and also e2 complement, because e2 is in the algebra, they are in the algebra. Then what we can do is we can intersect e1 complement with e2 complement, and because those two things are in the algebra, then if you intersect them together, that will be in the algebra. Then if you take the complement of whatever that answer is, so E1 complement intersect E2 complement, complement, that's also going to be in the algebra because the algebra is closed under complement. And then you apply De Morgan's law to say that E1 complement intersect E2 complement, complement is the same thing as E1 union E2. And we can draw a nice Venn diagram to explain why that is. So this is this is a very famous law in logic and set theory called De Morgan's law. So if you have your set E1 here, and you have your set E2 here, and then there's E1 intersect E2 in the centre. So Let's think about what we want. We want E1 union E2, so that's everything that's E1 in E1 and everything that's in E2, so everything that I've shaded in red there. Let's think about then what um, E1 complement would be, so it's everything that's not in E1, so that's everything that I'm shading in green, so that's that. Then we want E2 complement, so that's everything that's not in E2, so that's everything that I'm shading in blue here. It's not going to be a brilliant picture. In fact, I should have drawn separate pictures. Um, so then if you intersect everything that's not in E1 with everything that's not in E2, so the bit that you're going to then end up with is, if I take some of this colour out, get rid of all of this, so it's everything that is not in E1 and is not in E2, so all of the things that are in E1 is here, all the things that are in E2 are here, so it's all of this bit around the outside, and if you take the complement of that, then you'll get everything that's not in there, so you'll get E1 union E2. So this is saying what's not in E1 and is not in E2, everything that's not that, but that is everything that's in either E1 or E2, i.e. the union of E1 and E2. So that is De Morgan's law. So that's how you argue then that E1 union E2 is in the algebra. So we started off, remember, with just two arbitrary elements of the algebra. We said because they're elements of the algebra, E1 complement and E2 complement must be elements of the algebra. Because the algebra is closed under intersection, 
E1 complement intersect E2 complement must be in the algebra. Because the algebra is closed under complement, then E1 complement intersect E2 complement complement must be in the algebra. But this is the same thing as E1 union E2 by de Morgan's law, and therefore E1 union E2 is in the algebra because it's equal to this thing. Uh, so that's how you prove that for any two arbitrary elements of the algebra, if these two things are true, then E1 union E2 is also in the algebra. So algebra is therefore, the empty set and the whole set are in the algebra, the algebra is closed under intersection, the algebra is closed under complement, and then also the algebra is closed under union. So from these two you can gather that it's closed under union. And indeed actually you could change property number two, and in some places, some textbooks may well do that. They may well actually say, let's have, let's write this as E1 union E2 is in the algebra. So scrap this one and put rule four in its place. And equivalently from this and this, you can get this from de Morgan's law. So I might just show that to you. So if we now assume that one, three, and four are true, let's show that you can derive that two is true. And hence we showed that um, four and two are kind of interchangeable in the definition of an algebra, if you like. They're not interchangeable in the definition of a semi-algebra. Semi-algebra, you must keep it as an intersection. But in algebra, because we've got the closed under complement, uh, you can actually, there's a little bit of freedom in the definition here. You could actually use E1 union, E2 has to be in the algebra as property number two. So let's say we've now got three and four true and show that they imply that two is true. Um, so we want to take two elements then of the algebra, E1 and E2, in the algebra. And we want to show that E1 intersect E2 is in the algebra. So again, we'll do E1 complement and E2 complement. They have to be in the algebra because it's closed under uh, complement. Then we'll take E1 complement. And I'm just following my nose here. I don't really know that this is going to work, but what else can we do? It's obvious what you have to do. We don't have that it's closed under intersection now, so we are going. To, we have that it's closed under union, so obviously we're going to union these two together. So E1 U complement, union E2 complement is also going to be in the algebra, and then we'll complement that, and then hopefully by de Morgan's law that will equal E1 intersect E2. So E1 complement, union E2 complement, all complemented, that's then forced to be in the algebra. And now let's just convince ourselves that this is another one of de Morgan's laws, that this is E1 intersect E2. Um, so let's just think through this. So everything that's not in E1 or everything that's not in E2, so if you think about the Venn diagram, here's E1, Here's E2, they've got some intersection. So everything that's not in E1 would be all of this. Everything that's not in E2 would be all of this. So everything that's not in E1 or not in E2 is everything apart from the things that are in both E1 and E2. So it's the complement of E1 intersect E2. And therefore, when you complement that, you get back to E1 intersect E2. So yes, this, this thing that we've shown is in the algebra just by following our nose. This is equivalent to E1 intersect E2. And this is the other one of de Morgan's laws here. Uh, so there are two of them. Uh, and we've basically just seen both of them. So that E1 intersect E2 is equal to E1 complement union E2 complement complement. That's one of de Morgan's laws. And then the other one is E1 union E2 is equal to E1 complement intersect E2 complement complement. So we've just used those to show that um, these two properties are kind of interchangeable in the definition of an algebra. So that's all I wanted to really say in this video, that uh, algebras are also closed under finite unions. Thank you.